Atheists and other critics of Christianity often list biblical contradictions as one of their top objections to Christianity. But does this claim hold up to scrutiny? Today I will examine this question by looking at a third strategy for resolving alleged contradictions in the Bible. This video is part of a collaborative series between myself and Cole from Practical Faith. Each video stands on its own, but if you're not already doing so, you may want to watch from the playlist to see them in order. Then subscribe to both our channels to make sure you don't miss future installments in the series. Links to the playlist and Cole's channel are found in the video description box. So far in this series, we've looked at how Christians understand inspiration and then gone over two strategies for resolving alleged contradictions, reading the passage in context, and realizing that omission is not the same as contradiction. Now I turn to a third strategy, realizing that Jesus' ministry lasted several years. If you add up all the days depicted in the Gospels, you may come up with a couple weeks, maybe a month of days. Yet Jesus' public ministry lasted three years. What happened to all the rest of the time? The answer is obvious. Lots of uninteresting stuff was left out. As John notes at the end of his Gospel, Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. All biographies must be selective, as even a single day's activity could fill a book, and the Gospels are no exception. Jesus no doubt taught the same basic message everywhere he went. He probably even worked similar miracles on multiple occasions. Yet, critics ignore this and always attribute similarity to a gospel writer taking the words of Jesus from another gospel and moving them to a different context. In reality, the historical Jesus no doubt actually said similar things on different occasions. So there's really no reason to assume reappropriation by anyone. Additionally, quotes are not intended to be exact, this should be obvious from the fact that they are likely translations from Aramaic, but rather convey the ideas Jesus taught. Let's take a look at an example. Matthew records a story involving talents, a type of Roman coin. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. Skipping ahead, he also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you do not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money at the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. Luke records a similar story, but talks about minus a different type of coin. A nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. Skipping ahead, then another came, saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him, and give it to one who has the ten minas. In Matthew, there are eight talents divided on equally. In Luke, there are ten minas, apparently divided equally. The stories are framed differently and contain different details. A critic might call this blatant contradiction, but to my mind it is far more likely that Jesus told similar parables on different occasions 
than that one of the Gospels changed most of the details or that both stories reflect inaccurate memories of the same event. Let's take another example. Jesus famously fed a large crowd with a tiny amount of food, but different Gospels contain different details. In Matthew, for example, we read, Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up seven baskets full of broken pieces left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. John's Gospel contains a similar story. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. So we have a discrepancy on the number of people fed. Was it 4,000 or 5,000? We also have different amounts of fish and bread at the start and different amounts of leftovers. What's going on here? Have one or both of the authors changed things for their own purposes or simply got things wrong? If some of the details matched, this might be a reasonable conclusion. As a side note, even if this was the conclusion reached, it would actually increase the historical reliability of the event in question because it would indicate two independent accounts of the same event. However, I think in this case there is a clearly superior explanation. Two different events are described. If you think that sounds ad hoc, think again. Matthew himself records a separate feeding of 5,000 men, indicating that he himself saw the feeding of the 4,000 we read previously as a different event than John's feeding of the 5,000. He writes, now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Here we see that the details match up nicely with John's narration. Five thousand men fed, five loaves and two fish, twelve baskets of leftovers, and so on. Since we know that two different events are described here, we can justifiably conclude that some other differences between the Gospels are due to the same phenomenon of narrating different events. We've now seen three solid strategies for resolving apparent contradictions, but there's still many more. I hope you're finding these videos rewarding and are learning to think through Bible difficulties for yourself. If you're watching from the playlist and the next video has been released, it will start momentarily. If not, click the icon to my left or the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.